Hello everyone, in this instructional video we are going to cover the purchase orders feature from the inventory planner in Sellerboard. This feature will help you create purchase orders, indicate the quantities of the products you want to order, their manufacturing costs, transportation costs, then export everything into a CSV or XLS file to be able to send it out to your supplier. Whenever the supplier will confirm that the products have been shipped, you can change the status of the PO in Sellerboard from draft and saved to shipped. And then, whenever the products will arrive at your prep center, if you're using one, or directly to the FBA warehouse, then you can change the status of the PO from shipped to closed. Why is that needed? So, in this fashion, you will get your numbers updated in the inventory planner, in the ordered column and in the prep center column. On top of that, you will also get your cost of goods for the products from the PO updated because this is a new batch of products and chances are that the cost of goods for the products already is different. So last but not least, you can create FBA shipments directly from the POs that you've created previously. Let's jump inside the demo account and see how it looks. So with the PO dashboard, you have all of the information regarding your current POs. You can create new purchase orders, clicking this blue button at the bottom of the screen. You have some filtering options, so you can select which products you want to find inside the POs and just check the boxes and then filter out the POs that contain these products. You can also go ahead and search a PO by name, by supplier or by their status and filter out the results. Besides that, you have three tiles that give you the info regarding your POs in different statuses. So you will know your PO count, your total cost and total units that are currently ordered or shipped or maybe the POs that are in draft. Why do you need the statuses? Because when you change them, then Sellerboard updates the information regarding the POs on the inventory planner and I'm going to show you how it works. Let's go ahead and take a look at the columns that we have here in the list. So we have the PO dates, their numbers, their suppliers, which you can add, by the way, on the suppliers page. Let's take a look at that on the suppliers page, which is basically a notebook with information regarding all your suppliers. And you can input info regarding their name, contact details, and the currency that they're working in. Let's jump back to the POs. And over here, you will have, as I mentioned, the supplier, the products inside the PO, total units ordered inside the specific PO, the total cost, estimated arrival date, any comments you need to add, maybe you will link FBA shipments to specific POs, which you can do. And then their status, which is really important, in a minute you're going to see why exactly, and the actions. So with every PO, you can either edit the PO, delete it, create an inbound FBA shipment based on the PO, or maybe you want to duplicate the PO that you've done previously just to repeat it. I want to jump back to the inventory planner page to show you what values exactly does the PO feature update. So as you probably know, and we've discussed this in the previous instructional video for the inventory planner, I suggest taking a look at that one if you haven't done so. You have your FBA and FBM stock that is pulled by seller board from Amazon. And also, you might have some of the stock inside the prep center. So these values right here, you normally input them either one by one for every ASIN by hand, or you can use the import function to upload this information in bulk. And also, the same applies for the ordered column. So the values in this column are either updated one by one for each ASIN, or are updated through the import function. But there's another way to do it. You can use the purchase orders feature to create POs, send them out to your supplier, and then update their status from draft to ordered, shipped, and closed. And then the numbers inside your inventory planner will get updated automatically. Let's create a new purchase order to show you how it works. In this window, when creating a new PO, the first information you will input will be general info regarding the order. You will select a supplier, which you can add straight from this drop-down menu, or you can do the same from the suppliers page. After that, you will input a carrier, a tracking number, and maybe add some comments if you need to. You will then proceed to adding the products to your PO. Let's say we want to order this product and this product. I'll go ahead and input the number of units we want to order for each product. And also, 
either specify the units per box for each product or the total boxes ordered. Sellerboard will do the math. I will also have the information regarding the box dimensions, which I have input previously in the inventory planner for each product. Then, Sellerboard will show me my total manufacturing cost based on the cost of goods that was input for these products previously and will compute the manufacturing cost per unit. So, transportation costs per unit is something I want to also add if I have them. I'm accounting for an additional customs fee customs clearance that will add up to let's say $500 and I want to attribute this cost by product or maybe I'd rather say by manufacturing cost I can also maybe have some cost that will be only specific for one product if I want to do a quality check which will cost me $100 but this time I want to attribute these costs only to specific products from my PO so I'm selecting this model of attribution and then I'm selecting the products they want to attribute this cost to. Next, I'm going to switch back to the products tab, see how my transportation costs per unit changed and how it affected the total cost per unit. After which, as a final step, I can either link this PO to a specific FBA shipment that I already have or attach any additional files that I want to which can be a design file, a quality check instruction, or anything else really that I want to forward to my supplier with my PO. After that, I'm going to check my numbers again and click save. Now I'm ready to export my purchase order into an Excel file or PDF file and then send it out to my supplier. Now I'm ready to switch the status of the PO from draft to ordered. Given I've exported my PO information and I've sent it to my supplier, that means that I've placed the order. And now I'm going to tell Sellerboard that, hey, I've just ordered these two products. The first one I ordered 1,000 units and the second one 2,000 units. And this is their cost of goods. So I'm having a total cost per unit calculated as a cost of goods per unit. Now I will click save to confirm the status change. Sellerboard will ask me, do I want to make the changes on the planner page? And that means that inside the planner page, I will click save. So confirm that I want to make the changes. Uh, in the inventory planner, I have two columns, the prep center stock and the order stock. If I just ordered two products, then the values for the ordered quantities will be added here. Let's jump back into the purchase orders. As you can see um, from ordered, the next status is shipped. So whenever manufacturer confirms the shipment of the product, I will change the status here. If any changes need to be done to the PO itself, I can do them over here. And then I can click save to confirm that, okay, these products were shipped. After receiving the products at my prep center, I will click on the closed button to change the status again and hit save. Now, Sellerboard will ask me three things. The first one, if I want to add a new batch of cocks for the products from the PO, because I've just input information regarding the products I'm ordering and their total cost per unit. So I can update my cocks for these products. I can select the date when exactly the new cocks should take effect. And also if I want to account for the remainder stock from the previous batch. Maybe I want to do so because I still have some products from the previous batch with the old cogs. I will also say that I want to make changes in the ordered column on the planner page. Since these products have already been shipped and also delivered to my prep center, they are no longer ordered. So the values must be subtracted from the ordered column for the specific products. And I also want to make changes in the prep center column on the planner page. Since these products have already been delivered to my prep center and I can select which one if I'm working with several ones then the values must be added from the ordered column to the prep center column then I will click save so as you can see the PO feature allows you to create POs and update the values for the products that you're ordering in the ordered column and in the prep center column of your inventory planner so these two columns will be updated for you and another important thing, 
is the fact that the POs update your cost of goods for you on the products page. So whenever you decide to create a new batch of cogs, a value will be created and updated on the products page. Jumping back to the PO section, one more important thing I want to show you is the fact that based on the PO that you've previously created and you have a list of all your POs over here, you can create an FBA shipment. So if I want to send these products to my FBA warehouse, then I can go ahead and create an inbound FBA shipment. Immediately, I will start the process of creating an FBA shipment. We'll cover this topic in the next instructional video. Mm -hmm.